Hey there, everybody. My name is Kristen Binford. I am a wedding venue owner. I'm actually coming to you today from my bridal suite. And I also have served as a business coach to hundreds and hundreds of wedding venue owners all over the country. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that by the end of this video, you might be saving yourself $5,000, $10,000, So stay tuned. Uh, if you are watching this video the first time we debut it, go ahead and comment hashtag live in the comments. If you catch this video later, comment hashtag replay. All right, my friends. So some of you may be feeling the pinch of booking not coming in as strongly for uh, 2024 and 2025 as you've seen in past years. We speak to hundreds and hundreds of venue owners every year, uh, diving deep into their businesses and discovery calls, myself and my team. And one of the things we've just heard over and over and over is how soft the market feels, um, how couples are taking a longer time to book their venue, how it seems like there's less couple shopping. So if you're feeling that way, I just want you to know you're not alone. Here's the thing, though. I see so many venue owners try to solve that problem the wrong way, and it actually ends up costing you more money and more time. And so that's what we're going to talk about today in this video, and I call it the trap of things. Now, so many venue owners, listen, <laughs> we love our spaces, and I always joke with venue owners when they're new that um, you might think that you are almost done with your venue. You might think that... Um, you're almost done. But what's true is you're always going to have more ideas. So um, there have been lots of areas and things to uh, that we've added to our venue over the years. And I know that uh, just part of one of the traits of being a venue owner is you have lots of good ideas. There's probably things that you want to add to your space too. Um, and I want you to start by taking just a few minutes today you can do it right now while you're watching this video, pull out a sheet of paper and I want you to make a list of all of the things that you want to add to your venue. And if you had to make a guess, so if this is columns, right? One column is all of the things like, oh my gosh, Kristen, I want a new bridal suite and I want to dig a pond and I need a new kegerator, whatever the things are, right? Make a list of all of your wants. In the right-hand column, I want you to just guess, best estimate that you can, what would the investment be for all of those things? Now, here's why I encourage you to make that list. Because so often when we talk to venue owners, there's something that's floating around in their mind. Like, oh, I need a chapel, or I need a paved parking lot, or I need whatever the thing is, right? And that feels like the thing that's getting in the way of you and booking more of your ideal clients. And I can tell you after coaching hundreds and hundreds of venue owners, it's pretty rare that you need that thing before more couples are willing to book, right? So the risk is that you invest $5,000, $10,000, $25,000, $100,000 in the thing that you think you need but it doesn't make your phone ring. So often what venue owners need is more strategy, more consistency in their business. And it's not about the things, right? That's why I call it the trap of things. Now, there's there's something psychological to this, that full transparency with venue owners, I've never figured out. Like there's something I know um, that people feel like, oh, I, I can see the investment in that new patio. Um, I, and, and it feels like the smart thing to invest your money in. But I can tell you time and time and time again, working with coaching clients, they haven't needed to put that thing in to book more weddings. And here's what I would prefer for you. And I think you would probably prefer for yourself too, because we've certainly added a ton to our venue over the years, but we've done it from cash flow. I mean, our ceremony area pretty close to $80,000 to build our ceremony area. That's not small money um, in terms of uh, adding something to the business, but we did that from cash flow. We did that because the business was being successful enough to support it. And it was in support of better function in our business. It was in pursuit of more of our ideal clients, but I wanna be clear 
that we were able to do that because we fixed strategic things in our business, not just invested money in hard, good things in our business. Does that make sense? So um, I also just want to speak real quickly to the fact that I see far too many venue owners. And if this is you, my friend, like, I'm going to invite you and challenge you to put yourself on the list. I see so many venue owners feel like they need to invest in more things in the business to be kind of keeping up with the venue next door or the venue down the street. Um, and they're not paying themselves. And this is a lot of work, my friends. It definitely can be. The nights and weekends business, if you're doing it all yourself, it can take a lot from you. And so I really want to encourage you that instead of prioritizing putting all of your profit every year back into keeping up with the venue next door, I really want to encourage you to prioritize yourself on that list, because what I've noticed is that venue owners, and so often, I mean, we've heard so many stories of venue owners for two or three or four years or more have been spending all of their time in the business and not compensating themselves. And this is where burnout can really start to live. So if that's you, I want to make sure that I'm challenging you today to make yourself and your family a priority in the business. It's not just about keeping up with the venue down the street. So um, also, I want to remind you that your best opportunity is now. And I say that because the best opportunity is always now. When I look at demand that exists in the marketplace today, so many people are feeling like, oh my gosh, it feels so different. Well, it is different from 2021 and 2022, where we had a surplus or a, a backlog of demand because of reschedules from 2020. 2023 was a solid year for a lot of venues. What we're seeing and have seen is what's been termed the engagement gap. Basically, because of COVID lockdowns, um, because, but because of COVID lockdowns, both because people quit dating and because some people who got locked down together, their relationship didn't pan out. Um, there's a gap in the number of couples getting engaged, which means there's a gap in the number of couples shopping for a venue. So is the marketplace more competitive than it was a few years ago? In the short term, yes. In the long term, yes. Here's why. If you ask me in terms of demand, what does this year feel like? It feels more like 2019. Right now we have 108 weddings booked. In 2024, I'd have to look at how many we have booked in 2025, um, but that's significantly ahead of our marketplace for most venues in terms of the number of weddings booked for 2024. So um, it's, but I say that to say it feels like 2019 demand. So for those of you who, who weren't in this industry pre-COVID, it feels more like that 2019 year in terms of demand. But what's also true is more venues have opened and more venues are going to continue to open. This business looks like an easy, fun cash cow from the outside looking in. You as a venue owner know that that's not true, but more and more people are going to continue to open venues because it's pretty and it looks fun and people love to host events, right? And host parties. And so it feels like the industry so many people want to get into. So we're going to continue to see more competition. And what I want you to hear me say in this video today is I don't want you to be solving for that problem of more competition and less couples with more things in the business. What I want you to be solving for is getting really clear on what does the market need today? Who is the ideal client that you are best suited to serve? How do you build your pricing and your packages and your value proposition to meet the needs of those clients? And then how do you communicate that across all of your channels, all of your tour, your um, the way that you're delivering your services to couples and beyond? My friend, that's the part of the business I want to challenge you today to be focused on. Um, not looking at how do I invest another $25,000 in XYZ thing, because so rarely have I seen that thing, that thing be a game changer for venues. Okay. So that's my gift to you today, my friend. I know it feels like that expensive thing is the thing in between you and more of your ideal couples, but it's not really taking a step back looking upstream in your business and saying, who am I here to serve? 
What do they need? And how do I build my business around them? Those are the questions that I want you to be spending your time and your effort and your energy on today, my friends. All right, that is it for my quick video. I'm so glad you were here with me. If you're here the first time we debut this, comment hashtag live, hashtag replay in the comments if you caught it later. And listen, we talk to venue owners all the time. Sometimes we can help you. Sometimes something else is better. Sometimes we'll do a discovery call with a venue owner and we're referring them out to a friend or colleague um, because someone else is better to serve you. But I would say that if you feel like, Kristen, I know I, there's more opportunity in my business. I know that I want to serve more amazing couples and I want to do so in a way that I still get to have time uh, with my family and I haven't built the business on my back. You, my friend, are invited to book a call. KristenBinford.com slash accelerator is how you see our team's calendar. We'll dive in. We'll get really clear on where the business is now, what's stopping you, what's really stopping you from getting to where you want to go. And then we'll get clear on what that might look like. And I just ask that if you book a call with our team, please show up and play full out. We're still running uh, our high volume venue here and we're coaching other venue owners. So is everyone else on my team. So um, if you book a call with our team, we promise to respect your time. Please respect our time. Make sure that you show up, that you are prepared to play full out and all of the business owners join you on that call so we can really get clear on what you want and what's getting in the way. All right, my friends, kristenbinford.com slash accelerator. And I will see you in a future